we're going to look at tax havens and why they exist. So let's start off with a bit of history and look at Switzerland. There are many myths and legends around how Switzerland emerged as a tax haven. After World War I, countries like France raised taxes massively to rebuild their economies. And this spurred the wealthy to start looking for alternatives. A few decades later, Jews fleeing persecution in Nazi Germany found a safe haven in Switzerland. Unfortunately, after Germany's defeat, Switzerland also aided their Nazi persecutors in fleeing with their wealth as well. It's important to remember that this whole process is not just the result of external forces. Many states have actively sought to attract capital by sort of bartering away their sovereignty. And the general practice of concealment and tax avoidance is hardly anything new. Swiss banking, for example, existed since at least the late 18th century. During the age of colonialism, as the Dutch competed with other powers in Asia, the Netherlands took the step of exempting taxes on foreign income. The Dutch holding company subsequently developed into a lucrative tax avoidance scheme. And many modern corporate tax evasion techniques, in fact, originated in the U.S., New Jersey and Delaware pioneered many corporate tax evasion techniques. New Jersey created the legal concept of a holding company, that is a company holding holding other companies through equity. And this gave birth to transfer pricing and modern tax evasion techniques, which we will cover later. Rockefeller Standard Oil, the world's largest corporation at the time, moved to New Jersey. Delaware, realizing there was money to be made from one-upping New Jersey, created an even more uh, friendly corporate regime. Delivered law became a template and was copied very successfully by modern tax havens. Even today, 60% of Fortune 500 companies are incorporated in Delaware. How many tax havens are there? A well cited University of Amsterdam study identified at least 24 SYNC OFCs and 5 conduit OFCs. But this list is by no means exhaustive. Many of these havens have their unique selling points. Some are preferred by hedge funds, some are used for drug money, and some are just reasonably focused. So Mauritius is your best bet of accessing India. Shakira prefers Malta, whereas Lewis Hamilton prefers Monaco. Even Liberia, a West African poverty line country, has started building itself as a tax haven. In his excellent book, The Wealth of Offshore Nations, Gabriel Zuckman estimates total money in offshore havens to be around $7.6 trillion, or 8% of global household wealth. For context, this is equivalent to the combined GDP of the UK, France, and India. And it's interesting how he arrives at it. Take the case of Tesla stock, a US company held in Switzerland by a UK resident. The the US knows that foreigners hold Tesla stocks. So this shows up as a liability in the US's accounts. The UK should ideally record it as an asset, but it has no way of knowing since the asset is in a private bank in Switzerland. So globally, we sort of have a mismatch of liabilities and assets, more liabilities than assets, as if Earth was owned by Martians. So why are there so many tax havens and why do governments continue to turn a blind eye? Well, there are many political reasons for the existence of tax havens. The KGB and the CIA both use tax havens uh, to fund their coward activities during the Cold War. And with many communist countries started opening up during the 90s, changes in the law couldn't really keep up with changes in society. Having entities offshore was one way for many of them to adhere to the spirit of free enterprise. On occasion, tax havens have surged in response to stringent government policies as well. In the UK, during the 70s, the top rate of income tax went as high as 83%. And this prompted many including the Rolling Stones to renounce their residency and become tax exiles. Their album Exile on Main Street refers to their experience of living in France as tax exiles. And how can we forget the role of tax havens in corporate tax evasion? Corporations have saved massively from transfer pricing and offshore havens and are likely to block any legislation that goes against them. Companies like Apple and Google made headlines recently for using creative accounting loopholes, specifically the double Irish, double death sandwich to lower taxes. Donald Trump made famously made campaign promises to get US companies to bring back offshore money. Interestingly, he himself 
is very likely to have used similar strategies. Jack Blum of the Tax Justice Next Network speculates that the Trump brand name may possibly be trademarked to an offshore shell company in a tax haven. So given how deeply intertwined tax havens are with political realities and the 1%, we are very unlikely to see any different. Now that we've covered why tax havens exist, we can look at some of the key players. We mentioned Switzerland earlier, and that is an example of a conduit offshore financial center. Uh, basically, it's a transit money for a po transit point, sorry, for money disappearing into proper tax havens like the Cayman Islands. And now Switzerland's corner of the market is private wealth and private banking. The world's largest ba private banks, UBS, Credit Suisse, Julius Bauer, are all Swiss banks. Geneva is also home to the Geneva Freeport, a massive warehouse complex where art buyers can anonymously register works of art. And this anonymity is a great way to avoid paying taxes on your newly acquired. Van Gogh. Nearby Luxembourg is the land of mutual funds. If you've ever invested in a mutual fund and looked at the fund documents, chances are it's headquartered in Luxembourg as a usage vehicle. Another alpine tax haven worth mentioning is Liechtenstein, which is a country famous for its Anstalt trust structure. Basically it provides an inherent tax-free structure where all powers are concentrated in the hands of the trustee and not the beneficiary which is basically a convenient way for royal families to control prospective heirs. And what we've mentioned here so far are relatively gray areas. Uh, for some of the senior cases of tax havens, uh, we need to travel to the Caribbean. Most of the Caribbean countries are pure tax havens. They have microscopic economies and really exist for the sole purpose of tax shelter and avoidance. Topping the list here are the Cayman Islands, the preferred tax haven for hedge funds with over 60% of global hedge funds registered in the Cayman Islands. Why is that, you ask? Well, the Cayman Islands Monetary Authority has stringent laws protecting the right of investors such as proper disclosures, but by the same token, very little red tape on things like investment strategy. They even have a stock exchange and looking at the list of funds in the Cayman Islands, one finds most top shelf funds such as Ray Dalio's Bridgewater. Interestingly, many Chinese tech companies, including Jack Ma's Alibaba, are incorporated in the Cayman Islands. The so Cayman Islands is also one of the best places in the world for registering a yacht. So if you're in the market for a yacht, you want to avoid taxation. On top of that, the Cayman Islands is a commonwealth territory. So you have the full might and protection of the Royal Navy behind you. Across the Caribbean Sea, the British Virgin Islands are a very close competitor. They are popular for offshore corporate structures, and it is estimated that a third of offshore companies are in fact BVI based. And more than half the companies in the Panama paper leaks weren't from Panama, but the Virgin Islands. Uh, historically, it served as a great source of round tripping, and round tripping is where money flows out of a country and is reinvested on more favorable regulatory terms. And no country is an exception here. But it's worth pointing out that BVI is the fourth largest source of foreign capital inflow for China. And if you flip over to the balance of payments for the United States, you can see that once again, B BVI investments are pretty hefty indeed. Now the BVI has double tax treaties with a lot of countries. Uh, one interesting exception is Russia. And Cyprus has historically filled this niche. Uh, and this is really the differentiating factor for a lot of offshore centers. Double taxation treaties often dictate your choice of offshore center. The Cayman Islands was earlier blacklisted by the EU, making it less attractive to corporations and individuals listed inside Europe. So similarly, Mauritius is the preferred way for investors to access India. Costa Rica opens its doors to online gambling companies. Belize and the Cook Islands are fantastic for asset protection. Basically, if you have a criminal case against you, no one can touch you here. Predictably, these are favorite uh, des destinations for the Bernie Madoffs of the world. Across the English Channel, the islands of Jersey and Guernsey tend to be used by the British elite. 
They obviously have a double taxation treaty with the UK, but notably not one with the United States. It's just not, it's not restricted to the British, of course. Uh, Jordan's Queen Rania has her Royal Trust incorporated in Jersey, which provides her with a monthly stipend. And Jersey and Guernsey have the reputation of being more expensive tax havens with better services. And going back to the Caribbean, Bahamas has a long history as a hive of scum and villainy. England supplied the Confederacy guns under Out Nassau, and during Prohibition, the Mafia used it as a center for bootlegging. Al Capone's accountant used it to legitimize their earnings, and this guy was something of a legendary figure. He was the inspiration behind Hyman Roth, the antagonist of The Godfather Part Two. Bermuda is another offshore center with decent vintage. In fact, Shell established the first offshore multinational office there in 1947. These days, they have cornered the market on offshore insurance. One big draw is captive insurance. And captive insurance companies are basically sort of self-insurance companies. Now, large corporations are subject to huge risks, which conventional insurance can't cover. So they set up special purpose companies for a rainy day. A good example are the fines British Petroleum paid for the oil spill in 2010. These were covered by a bespoke company that they had earlier set up. They're also big on reinsurance and also have a stock market. The Bermudan Stock Exchange has secondary listings for major companies like Jardine Matheson and HSBC. You know, Bermuda is also a great place for registering private aircraft, which, similar to the case of yacht registration, is the best way for you to avoid paying taxes on your hard-earned private jet. Uh, recently, Russia's Aeroflot registered a lot of its planes in Bermuda just to avoid higher taxes. Panama has the largest yacht registry and ship registry in approximately 400,000 offshore companies. Uh, and Panama is not a pure tax haven. It is an important trade and financial center given the trade, trade significance of the Panama Canal. Unlike some of the Caribbean islands, it is easier to transfer funds to Panama as it is an actual trade center. The Panaman Foundation is a popular structure, which is a trust vehicle similar to the to Liechtenstein's Anstalt we discussed earlier. Now, similar to Panama, it's worth noting tax havens are necessarily obscure countries trading their sovereignty for some extra revenue. Financial centers, Hong Kong and Singapore do not tax you on foreign income, which makes them both attractive as regional hubs and as offshore, offshore havens also. Most importantly, and this is not necessarily well known, the U.S. itself is a massive tax haven in a traditional sense. For U.S. citizen cor and corporations, the tax burden can be overwhelming. However, if you are a non-U.S. resident earning your income abroad, you are largely free to open a company and do as you please. Uh, and this is a paradox indeed. The UK isn't far behind here. It offers its own version uh, of, of the offshore company, the UK LLP. And London has historically functioned as a more lax alternative to Wall Street with the whole. Two other developed countries worth mentioning are Ireland and the Netherlands, namesakes of the infamous double Dutch, double Irish sandwich tax evasion technique. Now bear with me here as this is a little hard to explain verbatim. We look at the real life example of Microsoft who have a subsidiary in Ireland and have the IP for one of their products. And let's assume it's Microsoft Office uh, housed in Bermuda. Now Microsoft sell their products worldwide and let's use France as an example here. So basically they use the Ireland subsidiary to charge the French subsidiary an internal royalty fee for the use of the Microsoft Office license. And this is perfectly legal accounting, but it has the effect of reducing profits in France and Microsoft's tax burden basically in a high cost jurisdiction. But thanks to Ireland not charging taxes on foreign income, the other leg of this expense, the IP, uh, sitting in Bermuda doesn't get charged at all. And this is a simplified example, of course, but these kinds of avoidance strategies are unfortunately the norm rather than the exception. 
All right, everyone, thanks for watching. This is a dense topic and I've glossed over a lot of detail here, but I may do a follow-up if I get decent enough feedback. Uh, please do subscribe to the Substack and let me know.